G'day everyone and welcome back to our paranormal world. Whether or not you believe in curses, those associated with some of our most famous scary movies certainly do. Surprisingly, there are plenty of films which are said to have been cursed from the beginning. Here are the astonishing stories of bad luck and portentous happenings from seven of the world's biggest movies, including Poltergeist, The Exorcist, The Omen and The Crow. All of these films were beset by strange or unfortunate incidents and even deaths on set. Are they simply spooky coincidences or were these films really cursed? Poltergeist was released in 1982 and it terrified moviegoers with a malevolent spirit who invades a family home and makes contact through the television with the youngest daughter. Eventually, the poltergeist ramps up its activities and ultimately abducts Carol Ann. And it was pretty terrifying stuff in its time, but the subsequent deaths of the actors and some interesting coincidences have ensured this movie a place on the list of cursed films. In one scene of the film, Carol Ann's brother Robbie has a poster for Super Bowl XXII on his wall, a game which would actually take place six years later in 1988 in San Diego. In 1988 and in San Diego, Heather O'Rourke, who played Carol Ann, died the day after that game was played. She'd been exhibiting flu-like symptoms and collapsed in her home. She was rushed to the Children's Hospital in San Diego, where she suffered a cardiac arrest. It was then discovered she was suffering from intestinal stenosis, a condition where the small intestine narrows or blocks completely and emergency surgery was conducted. Unfortunately, she suffered another cardiac arrest while in recovery from that surgery and despite 30 minutes of active resuscitation procedures, she died that afternoon. The official cause of death was stenosis of the intestine and septic shock. This kind of sudden onset of stenosis is very unusual and would be expected to display prior symptoms. Interestingly, it's reported that Heather's mother in the hospital waiting room saw her daughter walk towards her smiling. Confused but happy to see her daughter, she rushed towards her, only for Heather to disappear. Shortly afterwards, she was informed that her daughter had passed away. But Heather's death wasn't the only death associated with this movie. Dominique Dunn played Carol Ann's older sister Dana in the film. In October of 1982, only eight months after the release of the film and aged only 22, Dominique was strangled by her ex-boyfriend John Sweeney in the driveway of her own home. She never regained consciousness and died after five days in a coma. John Sweeney was convicted of voluntary manslaughter and served only three and a half years in prison. Many people speculate that perhaps the curse on the film was due to the use of actual human skeletons as props in the horrific pool scene in the movie. Plastic skeletons had been deemed too unrealistic and expensive to make, and so those are actual skeletons in the pool with actress Jo Beth Williams. And the cherry on top of all of that is she had no idea. She only found out later that they were real, which is really creepy and really gross. The Omen was released in 1976 and it's the story of the young antichrist, Damien Thorne, adopted as a baby into a high-profile family after the death of their own child. 
It's about as creepy and terrifying as films get. The movie itself is filled with demonic symbolism, and the fear of the curse stretches way back to the film's genesis, when a religious advisor warned that making a film about the devil is opening a door to bad things happening. And that is pretty much exactly what happened. The strange occurrences surrounding the Omen movie began months before the start of filming, when lead actor Gregory Peck's son tragically committed suicide. Later, as Gregory Peck was flying to the filming location, his plane was struck by lightning, as was writer David Seltzer's plane two days later. Lightning would continue to terrorise those associated with the film, as executive producer Mace Newfield's plane was also struck, and producer Harvey Bernard narrowly missed being struck by a bolt of lightning while he was walking down a street in Rome. Gregory Peck had also booked a flight to a filming location in Israel, which he later had to cancel, but that flight crashed, killing everyone aboard. Astonishingly, the plane struck a nearby vehicle in which the pilot's family were travelling. During the duration of the filming, animals were observed to act strangely and go berserk, and several dog handlers were attacked and injured, despite their protective gear and the proper precautions having been taken. Tragically, a baboon handler was killed by a big cat shortly after filming. Director Richard Donner's hotel was bombed by the IRA, and although he survived that blast, he was later struck by a car, which he again survived. On the first day of filming, a head-on collision injured several crew members, though fortunately not fatally. Later, the actor who played the taxi driver who drives the young, demonic Damien around Italy had his hand injured, nearly taking off the finger after Gregory Peck slammed it in the car door, quite by accident. Special effects director John Richardson and his assistant Liz Moore were involved in an horrific car accident in the Netherlands, mere days prior to the US release of the film. And while Richardson himself survived, the accident decapitated Moore. Creepily, her death mirrored one of the deaths in the film itself. The accident occurred just after midnight and right near a signpost marking the nearest town of Omen, 66 kilometres away. And many who have reviewed the crazy accidents and coincidences in the making of this film have suggested that perhaps the film wasn't cursed by the devil at all, but rather perhaps it was blessed. After all, they suggest, if the devil wanted to shut down the film, it would have been no big deal to do so. But the strange occurrences seem to be more of an indication of power while still ensuring the central personnel remained alive to continue production. The Exorcist, released in 1973, terrorised filmgoers everywhere with the tale of the demonic possession of teenage Regan. People reported being physically ill upon seeing the movie, and one woman even blamed a miscarriage on the film. Violence often broke out in queues to see it, and the curse on the film almost stopped production before it even began. There were numerous injuries and accidents on set, including back injuries to both Linda Blair, who played Regan, and Ellen Burstyn, who played Regan's mother. The set burned down prior to filming. The house set was entirely destroyed, all except for Regan's bedroom, which is, of course, where most of the truly terrifying stuff takes place. And the fire delayed production by six weeks, and the official investigation found that a pigeon must have flown into the electrical box, short-circuiting it and causing the blaze. The only evidence for this theory, though, was the presence of pigeons in the building. 
with all the accidents and mishaps, the production crew actually called in a priest to bless the set. While the movie was in filming, Jason Miller, the actor who played the Jesuit psychologist Father Karras, who exercises the demon Pazuzu by taking it into his own body and then throwing himself from the window, was approached by a real priest in the street. According to Miller, the priest had no way of knowing he was connected with the film or even what it was about. He says the priest handed him a medallion and said, reveal the devil for the trickster that he is. He will seek retribution against you or he will even try to stop what you are trying to do to unmask him. And I guess you can take that one of two ways. Either this has some portentous warning to Miller or he encountered a deranged priest who randomly hands medallions to people and spouts nonsense. And if you are tempted to think it's nonsense, you might be interested to know that some sources suggest no less than nine people connected with the film, including a night watchman and a special effects expert, died before the film was completed. Actor James McGowan, who played Burt Dennings, a director friend of Regan's mother and the first of the demon's victims, died from complications relating to influenza prior to the film's wrap. And Paul Bateson, who played a radiology technician in the film, actually murdered a variety reporter in 1977, and he was later implicated in six other murders, but absolute proof of his involvement in those couldn't be found. At the premiere of The Exorcist in Rome, Lightning struck a 16th century church across the road from the cinema, causing its 400-year-old cross to fall into the street below. Linda Blair received assassination threats after the release of the movie, with people believing she was actually possessed by Satan and causing Warner Brothers to provide around-the-clock bodyguards for her for over six months. Roman Polanski's film Rosemary's Baby was released in 1968 and told the story of a woman impregnated with the devil's child. Anton LaVey was rumoured to have played the devil in the film, but that isn't true. However, he was friends with Mansonite Susan Atkins, who later played a part in the murder of Roman Polanski's wife, Sharon Tate. Producer William Castle received threatening letters due to his involvement with the film, one of which read, Bastard, believer of witchcraft, worshipper at the shrine of Satanism. My prediction is you will slowly rot during a long and painful illness which you have brought upon yourself. Which would never be a happy letter to receive, but he later suffered from a debilitating health condition which convinced him the film was cursed. It's reported that during one emergency room visit, he screamed, Rosemary, for God's sake, drop the knife. Musician and composer Christoph Komeda died of a mysterious brain injury after filming concluded. During the filming of The Passion of the Christ in 2003, star Jim Caviezel was struck by lightning and assistant director Jan Michelini was also struck, twice. Playing the role of Jesus Christ really took a toll on actor Jim Caviezel, whose shoulder was dislocated while performing the crucifixion scenes, and he also suffered from hypothermia, ultimately resulting in a lung infection and pneumonia. He also suffered from skin infections caused by the makeup which was applied to recreate the injuries that Christ received. The curse on the film The Crow, released in 1994, is notorious due to the on-set death of the leading actor, Brandon Lee. Lee's character was to be shot as he entered the room and he was actually killed when a live round was mistakenly left in the prop gun which was supposed to be firing blanks. Tragically, his death 
mirrored his father Bruce Lee's final role in the movie Game of Death, where Bruce Lee plays an actor who's killed after gangsters replace blanks with real bullets in a prop gun. But the set of The Crow was plagued by other incidents. On the first day of filming, a crew member had to be hospitalised after the crane he was driving ran into a power cable and sparked a fire. He had burns to 90% of his body. A construction worker drove a screwdriver through his hand, ouch, and a set sculptor accidentally crashed his car into the props room, wrecking the props and presumably his car. In another incident, the set was completely destroyed by a storm. Which all adds up to a lot of hints to stop production of the film before someone gets... Oh. The set of the Twilight Zone movie in 1982 was in California and the film included a Vietnam War scene where actor Vic Morrow and two children were supposed to be running from a pursuing helicopter. Tragically, however, during the filming of this scene, explosions from the special effects caused the pilot to lose control of the low-flying craft and it crashed into the three actors all three were killed. A year prior to his death, Vic Morrow had reportedly taken out a $5 million life insurance policy after he had a premonition that he would die in a helicopter crash. And the film's concept artist had included a burned out helicopter in the river in his sketches of the scene, creepily foreshadowing the events which unfolded. So that was seven movies with crazy coincidences or curse legends. What do you think? Curse or coincidence? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with your networks. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon, setting notifications to all so you can stay up to date with all of the latest paranormal content on this channel. I'll see you next time.